Hi, I'm Paul Brody. Mitch is behind the camera. We're in my shop. Welcome. We're back to bicycles this week. We're going to work on a U-brake for my Romax. I'm on shape number five here. I worked on, on, on different shapes over the week and I had to decide. I got some springs off a friend and I have three different kinds of springs. I had to make a choice in which to use. These are off a IRD U-brake. That's probably out of the 80s, hard to find. These are our Shimano U-brake springs and I don't particularly like the Shimano system, but we're gonna use these because this seems the best for the project. And I have some cantilever springs and I couldn't figure out how they would fit on the arms. So I bought a piece of metal. This is inch, one inch by four aluminum at 6061. $32 for this piece of metal. I got some bronze. We're going to make some bushings. It's going to go onto a tube that fits over the boss. So the boss is going to be larger than what's stock. So it's going to be a little bit more, more stable. And I guess the first thing to do is to mark out my shape. I think there's the, the shape that I'm tracing here is a little larger than it needs to be, a little thicker, but I can always make it smaller later to save some weight. When you make it too small, you can't make it bigger unless you start all over. So I have to do a right and a left, so I need to flip it over. I guess that's kind of economical like that. And the bandsaw can still sneak past the I've been looking forward to making these U-brakes for a while. It's the second U-brake that I'm making. I made a U-brake back in the 80s. And that's how the U-brake booster was, was made. Oh, how it came to be because, because the brake was so strong, it was flexing the posts a lot. On the frames we made, for a while, I'd say that it was a 50-50 split between U-brakes and the cantilevers. Because some riders like one, some riders like the other. So when, when, when we did batches of frames, we would always have it on the frame order, whether it was canty or U-brake. Yep. It's 60 61, it drills quite nicely. I made a drawing. It's not a drawing of the whole brake lever, but this is the hole that I have to make. That's what holds the bushing. That's where the spring goes. And see that tiny little hole right there on the top? That's what holds the spring. The spring has to fit into there. And then that's the drawing for the bushing, which gets made out of bronze. And this is a little smaller at the end because that goes in this end. That has to allow room for the spring. There's not a huge amount of extra space in there. It's just a center drill here. And then I'll drill a quarter inch hole. Then we'll go up in size from there. Here comes the quarter inch hole. I have to make the little hole off the side now. That's where the spring goes into. See how it's really, really close to the hole? So if I don't do it now and I, I sink down the, the larger hole, I can't do it. So that's why it's happening now. I got a drill that's a little bit larger than the spring, just a little bit. Okay, that looks the same as the other one. Okay, that's good. I'm going to use an end mill to make the hole. I've drilled a hole that's almost as big as the end mill. That saves me having to use a boring bar to make a, a certain size of hole. 
it's just a little bit easier. It took away a little bit of the hole, but I think I can still use it for the spring. I haven't made new brakes in a while, so I'm still on the learning curve here. As long as, as the spring still goes in, then that's okay. So this is a large end mill, and this is, is, is what makes the cavity for the spring. So I need to go down half an inch. When the end mill touches down, I zero that. So now I go down half an inch there. So what we're going to do now is to make the bushings and we press the bushings in and then we ream them and then we can cut the shape out. So everything has to happen in order. So we're going to take some bronze. This is a piece of bronze I had lying around. We've got to drill a hole and make a couple bushings. They're going to be a, a step bushing because one side needs interference fit for the aluminum and the other side has to make room for the spring. I think I'll make one. I'll press it in just to make sure that we're on track and then I'll make the second one. That would be smarter than making two and then trying it. Take one more little cut. Let's go to the hacksaw. I'm going to cut this off. And then we're going to see if it fits. Cross your fingers. Okay. We're going to see if it fits now. It fits in a piece of aluminum. It's not falling in, so let's let's go to the press and see how much of a press fit it is. Not a super tight fit, but that's going to work. That's where the spring has to go. Maybe we'll check and see if the spring actually fits now. Oh, look at that, it fits. Okay, so there's a little bit of pressure and that's going to hold the, hold the U-brake in against the bushing. All right, that seems to work. Whew. You never know if it's going to work. Sometimes you make things over again. I've done that many times. Okay, so let's do another bushing. I'm going to make this one a little bit larger so it's a little bit more of a press fit.
my lathe cut a little bit undersized. You see how it just goes in? Even though I checked the size when I first started the cut, it took an extra thou off. So I'm not very happy with that, but. So I'll put a little Loctite in it and it'll be good. So I have to let this set up a little bit before it gets reamed, can't get reamed right away. Yeah. There we go. So I can ream one hole. We can ream that hole right there. We'll set up the reamer and do that. Let's go over to the bike here, my Romax, and I'll show you what's going on. Normally what happens is, if you got a Shimano U-brake, Shimano U-brake goes right onto the post. You can see the bushing there. It looks like a brass bushing, possibly, maybe bronze. Goes on. Can you see how it's got a little bit of, a little bit of slop? It moves around. So on the U-brakes that I'm making, I got some I got some nice tubing, it's seamless tubing, 7 16 And they put a spacer on there. That's what my my U-brake is gonna pivot on. So it's a larger diameter and it's a, it's, a, it's a lot longer, so it's not gonna have it's gonna have very, very little slop. I think it's a better a design. So now that this is reamed out. Look at that, it just goes in. That's a pretty good fit, isn't it? And that's why I, I use the Rima, because the Rima makes a beautiful straight hole. That's my plan, make a, a better break. Let's go to the bandsaw now. We'll do some cutting, and in that time, the Loctite is gonna set up, and then we'll be, we'll be moving on. So we have a left and a right. So I think I'm gonna do some milling now. I think I want the, I think I want this one to be cut down this way. This is just rough here. It's gonna go on, on the rotary table. That's gonna get a nice scoop there. So this is gonna go missing. Then there's gonna be a slot there for the cable because the cable has to go in there. So that's the right side and then then on the left side you still want the slot there. But now we need to hollow out or or take away this part. So that'll go. So that's how the U-brakes cross each other. So this one's gonna, I'm not sure what's gonna happen here. It'll probably, maybe something like that. I, I don't know, I haven't done that before. I'm using a combination square. I'm just gonna roughly mark how much comes off so I don't really have to measure too much. And well, basically to the bottom of that, look, look at that. How's that for just using a felt pen on my finger? That's my line. That cuts like butter. It's one done. Okay, a few cuts here.
So that's basically how it's coming along. There's still more, more metal to take off. You can see how I took a little bit more than halfway. Can you see how that's a, a little bit proud there? So if they both go under the post, there's gonna be a little bit of a gap there. Maybe I want more of a gap. I can always put it back in the mill, take off a little bit more. So anyway, that's first step. Found a couple washers, got an Allen screw. And that's what's going to hold that down. Okay. So we're going to put a radius all around here, and we, we can go in a little bit, a little bit closer as well. And that'll help me to define the radius when I do some filing, because I can't do all, it all machining, but I can do quite a bit. That's what it looks like. It's starting to take shape. It's gonna, it's gonna take a little while to figure out what all this shape is gonna look like. That's where the pad goes right here. I've got these nice cool stop pads. So it's coming along. Okay, number two. That's right, got a left and a right. I'm just thinking that I screwed up, but I didn't. Because the springs have to go in from the outside, not on the inside. So we're good. What I think I'll do now is I'm gonna mill this flat here, because that's where the pad has to go on to. So that's a good step to do. There's a couple of U-brakes in the process of being made. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you. We both drink coffee, Mitch and I. If you would like to uh, uh, click on the link below in, the, in our description, you could buy us a coffee if you like. Thanks for watching. See you next week.